Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord God, for this time, this opportunity, Lord God, to even stand once again before your people, Lord God, and to minister your word, Lord God, to even share your word, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask that I take the background, Lord God, I must decrease in you so that you may increase, Lord God, in my life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Glory to your name, Father God. You receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to thank the Lord once again for giving me the opportunity to stand before y'all again. Uh, Pastor and Lady J for another opportunity to teach discipleship training. And today we're just going to have a good old dialogue about prayer and the importance of prayer. Why do we pray? You know, we're just going to talk about it. So I just want to ask y'all, is prayer important? And if you say yes, explain to me why prayer is important. Hallelujah. So why is prayer important? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Why is it important? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can go ahead, Minister T. Um, yes. Um, uh, thank you, Minister Mom. Uh, yes, I, 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 uh, I, I, I truly believe and highly believe that, of course, all through life, all through the life of Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ ministry, it was all prayer, and prayer is the only way that we access heaven. That we that, 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 that we met, we 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 bring forth the kingdom of God to the earth realm, to the natural. Because if 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 prayer if prayer didn't exist. We'll just be mere men that just operate through earthly. We'll be just mere men, you know. But prayers is is utmost of uh, necessary because that's how we communicate with God. So without prayer, we can't communicate with God. Is what you're saying? I believe so. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For me, Minister G, I'll say prayer is not just important. Prayer is a mandate that was given to us by our Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 18 and 1, Then he spoke a parable to them that man always ought to pray and not lose heart. Yeah. So man, when the Bible says man, this is not meaning only the male gender. It's talking about men and women also that we are always ought to pray and not lose heart. That means that the blueprint for men is to be praying. So if we're not praying, we're outside the window of the Father. Yes, sir. Anything that we're doing, if we're not praying, that we're receiving without prayer, that shows that we're outside the will which God intended for us to live. God intended us to live by praying. Hallelujah. Oh. And not in heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Is prayer important? And if so, why? So we have, Karen says prayer is important because without prayer, we cannot communicate with God. And Mwamba, what did you say again? Um, I said that prayer was the mandate that was given. Mandate. He says that prayer is a mandate that was given by God. Hallelujah. Anyone else? I got one. Sam, go ahead. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about how we are to pray, we, like, we are to pray without ceasing. So therefore, like, we actually all commanded to pray because the Bible says that when Jesus came, he saw, he saw, he saw uh, that I turned his other house into a house of them, into a den of thieves. But really, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So therefore, like, as, as we enter into prayer, prayer is also like, where the Holy Spirit below can, can take us to a different realm of God. It's like we leave the natural realm and enter into a spiritual realm by, by, by the way of praying. Uh, we are commanded to pray, and also, like, it's, it's also a way to, like, be intimate to the Father because through prayer, we can really release a lot of things that, that's, that's going on within us. Like, the way 
We need that is the way we're able to express ourselves to the Father without having to hide ourselves or without having to hide who we truly are. Hallelujah. 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 Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, you got some, Bosco? Yes, sir. Go I, ahead. I could. I, I believe. Uh, I consider prayer as worship. Uh, prayer is worship. Hallelujah. I say prayer is worship because um, you know, depending who you are praying to, you basically worship that, that person. And so, when we go into prayer, uh. That's why um, I say it's worship because even those who aren't spiritual, you know, when they say, I'm about to go pray to God, that they even themselves don't even know that's a form of worship because even without them knowing, they are giving glory to God, you know, because they understand that God surpasses all things. So when we enter into prayer, it's basically submitting our worship unto God, you know, letting Him know that. I would rather be nowhere else except in your presence and in, in your atmosphere. So I believe that prayer is from worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have prayer is a way to communicate with God. Prayer is a mandate. Uh, prayer is a mandate twice uh, because we are supposed to. Um, and prayer is worship. So. What I have is sort of what every one of y'all have. But one thing that I do have is that prayer is a way to prepare for major decisions in life. If you look at Luke chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, Jesus Christ himself went to pray to make a major decision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Minister T, let me get you to go to Luke 6, 12, and 13, and I want you to read that. Luke 6 and 12 and 13. Yes, and, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Luke 6, 11, 12, and 13. You say 12, right? Yes, sir. 12 and 13. Verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. And to continue all night in prayer to God. Verse 13. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples. And of them he chose twelve. Whom also he named apostles. Hallelujah. So Christ had to go to the Father and communicate with the Father. And asking him who it is that you want to become a special messenger, an apostle, someone that's on a different mandate, someone that has a higher mandate, right? Doesn't mean that their prayer life will diminish. It means that their prayer life must increase because in order for us to communicate with God, we pray to God, you know? Sometimes we believe that, you know, whenever we're just having like a normal conversation where we're not on our knees or in a closet or with our hands together. We think that that's just talking to God, but that is still a form of prayer Hallelujah. unto God. So prayer is, prayer is so important that even the Son of God had to do it, right? Yeah. And the Son of God was placed on this earth to demonstrate yes, sir. what it is that we are supposed to do, right? So if he is demonstrating that even in major decisions of selecting who's going to be a disciple, I mean, who's going to be an apostle out of the disciples, he had to go to the Father for that major decision. Why is it that we don't think that we have to go to God for our major decisions, right? Hallelujah. So I have that prayer is a, you know, a way to prepare us for major decisions. Also, for situations in which we do not know God's will specifically, prayer is a means of discerning His will. Mm. Minister Mwamba, can I go, get you to go to James chapter 1 verse 5? James mm. chapter 1 verse 5. Hallelujah. This is oh, a good one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
James chapter 1 and verse number 5. The Bible says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberty and without reproach, and you will be given to him. Hallelujah. So we have to pray to the Father in order to receive his wisdom or his will. You know, we have to go to the Father to receive those things if we don't have it. So not only are we going to the Father for those things, we also go to, we also use prayer to gather workers for the spiritual harvest. Sam, go to Luke 10 and 2. Luke, Luke chapter 10 and verse number 2. Hallelujah. These were his Hallelujah. This word, this word, or the temple is to right. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Oh, Therefore, pray the Lord, the Lord of the harvest to send our laborers into his harvest. He said to do what? To pray. Hallelujah. So we are praying in order to increase. The farm hands to help with the harvest. He says, and he says to them, the harvest indeed is abundant. That means there are a lot of people out there that wants to know God, that wants to pray to God, but there are very few farm hands. There is much ripe grain. But farm hands are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So we pray in order for God to bring us more help, more farm hands. And not only that, we pray to show ourselves approved, right? That's false. Hallelujah. So right now... <laughs> If you were to look inside of this building that we're in, <laughs> there's a lot of seats, but they're vacant, right? And there are people that are out there that wants to fill the seats, but they haven't heard the right sound. Yeah. My God. So prayer is important for not only for those for us to pray for uh, help more farm hands, but prayer is also important that we hear the right sound. Yeah. Ooh, we have to pray to be able to hear the right sound. Because when we're not praying to hear the right sound, those vacant seats will remain vacant because we won't understand, you know, when I'm when I'm in prayer, when I'm asking God, Lord, lead me and guide me. And he sends somebody to lead me and guide me by his will. I haven't been in prayer. So the first thing I think is you're judging me. You're criticizing me. You're going against me. Nah, I don't want to go. I don't want to do that. You know, so when we pray, we pray to receive the right sound, to hear the proper sound. Because the word says that, you know, the stranger, they won't even go to. They won't go to the stranger. The strange voice, the strange sound, the sound that they are unfamiliar with, they won't go to it. Another reason why we use prayer is to gain strength to overcome temptation. Bosco, go to Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, 41. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 26 and 41. And I read in Jesus' name. Watch and pray. What? Watch and pray. What? Watch and pray. What? Watch and pray. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Watch and pray. So that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing. Flesh is weak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So we have to understand that prayer isn't something that's in the natural. Prayer isn't something that's just for the that's for the flesh. It's the spiritual thing. Because the scripture tells us to watch and pray. So if I'm praying and I'm not watching, then I'm putting myself in a bad position to be attacked, to be tormented, to go through all these things. And it says that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. So, we use prayer to prepare for major decisions, to gather workers for the spiritual harvest, to gain strength to overcome temptation, and we also use it to obtain the means of strengthening others spiritually. Brother John, can I get you to go to Ephesians chapter 6? Verse 18 and 19. Ooh. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We have to understand that prayer is very, very important. It's very Hallelujah. important. Hallelujah. You said Ephesians? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. And he says, I just I just stand strong like that, like that always. Pray for God to help. For God's help. Pray about everything as God's Spirit help you to pray for. For the purpose which carefully and all and all in that time, I'm repeating I'm the name of Jesus. I should stand strong like that. Always pray for God's help. Pray about everything as God's Spirit help you to pray for His purpose, which carefully all the time. Also continue to pray for all God's people everywhere. Verse 19. Yes, sir. Please pray for me too. Pray that God will give me the right message to, pray, to, 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 to speak. Pray that I will not be afraid to tell people about God's good news. Pray that I pray that I can explain God's secret to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My verse says, verse 18, pray at all times. Hallelujah. On every occasion in every season. If this, if prayer wasn't important, he wouldn't tell us this, right? If prayer wasn't the utmost importance, he wouldn't tell us to pray all times. Hallelujah. On all occasions in every season. In the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all saints, God's consecrated people. And pray also for me that freedom of utterance may be given me, that I may open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news, the gospel. Hallelujah. So, like I said, we pray, hallelujah, to obtain the means of strengthening others spiritually. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes God delays his answer according to his wisdom and for our benefit. See, sometimes we pray for things. And we don't know what we're supposed to do if we have to wait. And since I don't want to wait, I don't wait and pray. I wait and complain. Ooh, boy. Wow. See, in these situations, we are to be diligent and persistent in our prayers. Because if I pray for something 
You know, we have to understand that what if I pray for this job opportunity, but there is somebody there that will cause me to stumble, that will cause me to fall, or somebody that uh, will end up not liking me or not respecting me, and it causes me to have problems and hate my workplace and hate where I work. God says, give me time to move them out. Give me time so that I can prepare the space that I want you to be in for your benefits. I'm trying to put some people in place that's going to elevate you, that's going to bring you to higher places in the things that you want to be higher in, right? But when I'm unwilling to wait on the Lord and I begin to move prematurely, then I run into that co-worker or employer that God was trying to move in the first place. And now I'm getting in these altercations or these arguments with my employer and whatnot, and now I hate the workplace. I hate where I work. And since I hate where I work and I'm not happy where I work, that trickles down to my prayer life. Now my prayer life is being affected because I'm always frustrated and I'm not coming to God with a pure heart in prayer. I'm coming to God with frustration. I'm coming to God like, God, why did you do this? Why did, why did you have this person? I can't stand this person, this, that, and the third. So not only that, um, there's this one little thing that we uh, talk about. It says, God has said that we often go without because we do not ask. And if we go to James chapter 4, verse number 2, it says, You are jealous and covet what others have, and your desires go unfulfilled. So you become murderers. To hate is a murderer as far as your heart are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment, and the happiness that you seek. So you fight in war. You do not have because you do not ask. So when we don't go to God in prayer and ask, we don't receive. In one sense, prayer is like sharing the gospel with people. We do not know who will respond to the message of the gospel until we share it. In the same way, we will never see the results of answered prayers unless we pray. And this, I'm going I'm to close out with this one. We pray to demonstrate our faith in God that he, he will do as he has promised in his word and bless our lives abundantly more than we can ask or hope for. Minister Muamba, let me get you to go to Ephesians 3 and 20. We're closing out right here. Ephesians 3 and 20. <laughs> Ephesians 3 and 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare act or think infinitely beyond our heights, prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. So when we find ourselves asking God for these things, God says that when you ask, you ask for the minor things. You ask for very little. God says that I can give you a hundred billion times more than you can ever ask for. You ask God for anything 
And he says, as long as it's within my will that I have for you, then you will receive it. Not only shall you receive it, but you will receive more than what you ever asked for. You know, when I came back uh, to Houston, I was thinking of going to work for uh, Walmart, the one that's right there by the apartment complex, the little neighborhood of Walmart. It's going to pay you about $10, $12 an hour. But God says that he has better for me. And he put me in a position where I make $20 an hour. So though I was asking for something, though I was asking for something that is small, you know, that would just get me by, God says that no, I want to do better for you. I want you, I want to give you more. I want to give you better. So when we ask God, God will give you, but you have to be in prayer. So I pray that y'all receive that. If there's any questions, comments, or anything that y'all want to add, go right ahead and uh, ask your questions, give your comments, and whatnot. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, uh. I have a comment. Go ahead. It reminds us from Romans um, 8 and uh, verse 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is so powerful because so many times when we pray, we pray, if we're praying in the natural, or just when we're praying in understanding, we usually just pray according to what we see naturally taking place. Yeah. What first comes from our sight. But the scripture is saying that we sometimes really do not know what we need to pray for because the Bible says the Father already knows everything that you have need of before you pray. So most of the times when you're praying in the natural, you're only praying for those things which God is already going to do for you. You're worried about the wrong thing. But when you're praying in the spirit, you're praying for those things which he has blessed us with in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There is things that God wants us to pray for and that God wants us to be able to do so we may be able to win territory and win souls for his kingdom. I mean, ask yourself, when was the last time that you were praying and praying that somebody would be saved. Praying that a community would be church to Jesus. When was the last time we were doing that? Check if our prayers is only have been only by ourselves yeah. and what I need to But God is saying that I'm your father. And as a father, I'm obligated to help you with these things. These are small matters. If you seek first the kingdom of God and none of his righteousness, these things that the Gentiles seek, we actually seeking things that people don't believe that are seeking and that we pray unto God. And God is like, if you trust me, I'm going to give this unto you. But pray in this manner, by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Even pray Christ, God. even Christ prayed for us, you know, even though he didn't want to take the cup of wrath, he was still, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. He was in prayer about even receiving the cup of wrath, even in prayer about taking on our iniquities and our transgressions and our sins. He was praying to the Father, you know, and those are things, that's something that we have to do as well to pray to the Father, not only for things that are good, you know, but also whenever we have to go through suffering, when we have to go through trials, we have to get on our, we have to get to a place where we're praying to the father of allow help me to make it through you know not not to immediately take this away but to help me make it through and not only make it through but receive what it is that i am to receive while going through that's powerful Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, also, prayer is like a form of intercession in the spirit. Yes, sir. Like where, 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 the, where the spirit of the Lord downloads the, the necessary prayer to pray to utter. 
That's why if you go read in the book of Jude 1 and 20, I believe, it says, My beloved, pr uh, be praying in your most holy faith. Strengthen yourself praying in your most holy faith. Praying in your most holy faith. Because there's, like Brother Mormon just, or Minister Mormon just said, there's an utterance that can never be uttered, but it helps us know what the Spirit of the Lord is telling us at that moment. So that's power, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got something, Sam? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, prayer, whenever we don't spend, prayer is a way that we get to, prayer is a way that we are able to enter into the most holy place, which is the presence of God. Uh, and, in, and in there, we are able to be taught by God and by, and by, by the way of the Spirit. And then we are able, we are able to receive, uh, we, are, we are able to receive from, from God so that we, so we may carry out whatever He wanted to carry out on earth as He already is in heaven. And the more the more we enter into prayer, the less the less we get to walk in the in the flesh, because because we have to pray praying in the spirit all times, and also prayer. Whenever we pray, is the place that the flesh can never go, because he tells us that no uh, flesh can burn by God's presence. So every time we enter prayer, we enter a different uh, we enter to a different realm of God. So therefore, the flesh can never go to that realm. It's only the spirit, and, and that's why prayer is also spiritual. And like the more the more we pray, is like it's like the more we pray, the more we, we are. The more God lights His fire on our prayer on the prayer altars, because if we don't, because if we don't spend time in the secret place, that means our secret place will, 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 will begin to get weary and dry without without even us knowing. It. So like prayer is also another weapon that God gave unto us to use against the enemy and to also strengthen each other spiritually. Ooh. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time, this opportunity, Lord God, to receive your word, Lord God. And we just pray, Lord God, that this discipleship training, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to understand, Lord God.